Dominating the entrance to the Cromarty Firth is North Suter Battery. Armed in the First World War with two 9.2 inch guns, this coastal artillery battery was redeveloped during the Second World War when new 6 inch guns were installed. Join me as I take you on a walk through one of these remarkably preserved underground magazines. Hello, welcome back. So, today I am at North Suter Battery on the Cromarty Firth in the north of Scotland. A uh, fascinating place, used both in the First and Second World Wars. This is currently, we are standing on the First World War 9.2 inch gun emplacement. Uh, this small uh, house that's been built in the middle of the emplacement was uh, added in the Second World War as a access to the magazine, the subterranean magazine. Um, so the magazine was built in the First World War for the 9.2 inch guns and reused um, for the 6 inch during the Second World War. Uh, we can see there's still a daffet in place. This would have been used for um, lowering ammunition down into the magazine. Um, the little house that's been built on the 9.2 emplacement uh, that was used, um, I think, as a as an emergency escape. The emplacement in front of us now is the Second World War six-inch gun emplacement that, as I say, reuses the 9.2-inch guns magazines. So what we're going to do today is we're going to venture down uh, into the magazine. So I've been down once before just to, to make sure it's clear and there are two ways to get into it. One is the um, issuing ramp which will go down and then in the in that little sort of dog house um, we can we can leave by the emergency escape. So we're going to make our way down. So this is the um, issuing ramp for the six inch ammunition. Um, so there would be machinery and mechanisms here um, that would allow the ammunition to be um, to be winched up from the magazine down below. So I'm going to have to try and hold the torch and camera in one hand and shuffle down this whoa, relatively slippy concrete ramp. And here we are. A fascinating place. I have to say this would have um, started out as the um, 9.2 inch gun magazine. The, the blocked up um, entrance that would also have been used for loading and uh, loading ammunition is up there behind that huge amount of debris. Um, but this room in here, this is the shifting lobby. Uh, the shifting lobby would have been used to change out of dirty clothes into the clean clothes uh, for the magazine workers. Uh, we'll come around to that uh, in a minute. Uh, what I think we're standing in now is the original shell store. Um, this would have been used to house the 9.2 inch shells uh, originally. The wooden planking in the walls, uh, well that was to stop the shells um, bashing against the side of the, the side of the magazine so to protect the protect the shells and reduce the uh, the risk of sparks and accidental ignition uh, some numbers here uh, in no, no particular order uh, not quite sure of the significance of those uh, inside here we have one of the lamp recesses so um, one thing you didn't want to happen in your magazine was if you have a, um, an oil or a candle lamp 
uh, that would, would accidentally fall over or smash um, and create a fire in your magazine. That would, that would really be the end of it. Um, so all the lamps were stored in the uh, recesses. Ah, so here is the uh, emergency escape. So this this goes up to the to the center of that uh, that little doghouse. Uh, it's a really quite a, a thick steel lined pipe with a, with a steel ladder uh, running vertically. Uh, here it looks like a lamp recess, but I think this is a uh, telephone recess. Just judging by the cable um, that's going going down into it. More of the, uh, the wooden planks. Which of course now if they were if they'd been installed in the First World War would be around 110 years old. So this may have been a later this red brick, a, a later a second world war edition to the magazine and this large room um, would have been the, um, the propellant of the powder store. So we can see just the way the, the wall has been painted, the, the shape of the um, of the racks that would have would have held it. Well, there are indeed, indeed there are some museums um, in the UK and around the world. Gibraltar, I think, was the last one uh, I visited that, that still have these in place. And then we come out into what was the shifting lobby. So the, the workers would have would have come down here, um, and we have we have a, uh, there'd been a bench with pegs. Here and this is where the workers would have um, practically stripped down to their to their underclothes and hung up their dirty outside uh, clothes. We have the physical barrier of the shifting lobby here. Uh, so this barrier would have been raised. Um, there would have been a, a board slotted down uh, in here, um, sort of st physically stepped over um, into the magazine, and then with another another rack and bench here um, which in this instance I think would have been clean clothes on the inside and their dirty outdoor clothes uh, would have gone here. Uh, so you, you know you can, you, if you've noticed the you, you can go down and then go straight into the um, shell store. So the shells weren't terribly sensitive um, against ignition it was the um, it was the cartridges um, that contained the propellant uh, in here that really were um, quite often they were just in, in cotton, cotton bags and um, maybe in um, in leather containers and um, so all, all this work um, to minimize sparks would protect the cartridges um, and here we have another another lamp recess so the shoe do I imagine would be fitted yes so fittings on this side um, you can see where the with the glass um, would have gone to this, and this this bit of the wall has has also been been demolished. Um, ah, here we go. Yeah, so we have the cartridge store. Uh, yeah, and next door the shell store. As I say, originally for nine point two inch guns, uh, later reused during the war for six inch coast artillery. Um, and interesting, this particular um, battery was decommissioned in 1956 with the disbandment um, of the coastal artillery regiments. So my, for probably the sketchiest part here is while holding the camera one-handed I'll try and set Probably some very shaky camera work. I'm trying to get myself out. And here we are. Oh, look out in fresh air.
fresh air. So yeah, that was a tour of the magazines at North Suter Battery. So I hope you enjoyed that. Remember, remember to do the usual like and subscribe and follow for more military history content. Thank you.